What's going on, everyone? It's Ben from YGO from Zero, back with another retro Yu Gi Oh video and back with another Chimera Tech format video. Now, Chimera Tech format has been a lot of fun so far. It's the format based in January 2007 at SJC Orlando of that year, and it used the September 2006 limit list with the emergency ban of Cyberstein. So no Cyberstein in the format. It's also before things like Crush Card and stuff arrive in GX formats. So it's sort of a sweet spot where there's a lot of fun decks that you can play and none is too broken. Now, while there are a lot of fun decks you can play, there are also some less fun decks you can play, like Chainburn. Chainburn was a deck that was introduced in Stein format, and it did have a niche in that format because if you can get your opponent down below 5,000 life points, they can't use Cyberstein, and that's pretty good in that format. And Chimera Tech, it loses a bit of that niche, but it is still a deck you can play. It is a burn deck. It does a unique thing. So, you know, it's something that I wanted to show off on the channel. Now, I've changed the list a bit from Stein Forum because one, you know, it's a different format, so it makes sense to change it. And two, I wanted to sort of adjust based on some of the things I felt from playing the Stein version of the deck. So there's no Nightmare Wheels here, although I do think Nightmare Wheel is still a card to experiment with in Chain Burn. Um, there's also 43 cards in this list, mainly because I wasn't quite sure what to cut here. I like most of the cards in this list. I think they're pretty good. And I also felt that, like, you know, Chainburn's a deck that doesn't really care too much about having exactly 40 cards. It can go a bit over, because long as the decks are either drawing you cards or burning your opponent, you're generally fine with that. So I felt like going to 43 wasn't really that big of a deal. Sure, you're less likely to draw things like Chain Strike or your Gravity Bind, um, but mostly the deck can function without those in hand anyways. So I do think that this is ultimately fine, and uh, it's a good way if you're, like, Considering a list and you're not sure what to cut, it's a good way to try out a bunch of cards, you know, get some games with it, see what you like to draw, see what you don't like to draw, and then you can make those cuts in the future. But this is my current list. Uh, just going through the card by card real quickly. We got Big Shield Gardeners here. These are sort of defensive walls that your opponent can attack into and then take some damage from that. In general, when evaluating a burn deck, like the sweet spot for the expected amount of burn that you're able to do is like a thousand. And Big Shield Gardena, you know, your opponent will likely be taking a fair bit of damage from attacking into it. So uh, this does fit that bill most of the time. It also does protect you a lot of the time. Uh, we got Triple Mechadog Marins. These are potentially things that I would cut, but I do like them as just an option to bring out, maybe crash into an opponent's monster and deal a thousand damage. That's pretty good. We've got a Morphing Jar to draw deeper into the deck. We've got a saying and Stretch Out of Monsters. And then we've got all the spells and traps. For the spells, we got Triple Chain Strike. This is sort of what you're trying to build to. You're trying to build big chain links and then activate a Chain Strike to finish off your opponent. We've got a Graceful Charity to dig deeper in our deck. We got Triple Poison the Old Man to either deal burn or gain life. Now I mentioned that a thousand is generally the threshold that you want on these burn cards, but Poison the Old Man is a chain link in your chain. So that means that if you activate a chain strike on top of it, they'll be dealing effectively 1200 damage. So, you know, you can sort of rationalize that to get this above the thousand mark, but also the life point gain can come up. So I am ultimately fine with this. Maybe there's a card that you cut in the future because it doesn't quite do enough burn damage, but I think it's ultimately fine. We have Triple Tremendous Fire because, again, this deals a thousand. It can also be the start of your chain. The downside to this is that you can't activate mid-chain, but if you're starting your chain with this and then you're building up to the chain strike, then that's pretty fine. We got Triple Accumulated Fortune. There's another thing that benefits from building up chains, and then you draw two cards off it. We've got a Dimension Wall here times two. Um, you know, we could have fit in a third one. Again, this deck doesn't really care too much about going above 40, in my opinion, so we could do that, but I felt like the Dimension Walls and the Magic Cylinder, by extension, are a bit situational because you have to activate it when your opponent attacks. That won't always be happening. So, you know, I didn't want to play too many of these cards. We've got a Gravity Bind here to wall up against our opponent. We've got Triple Jar of Greed to draw deeper in our deck. we got Triple Jester to pair with our Drama Trios and Secret Barrels to deal a ton of burn damage that way. we got the Cylinder, as I mentioned. we got Double Reckless Greed to draw deeper in our deck as well. we got a Ring to pop our opponent's cards and also deal some damage. we got a T-Roar and two Waboku to protect ourselves. Now, you might wonder why you're not playing three Threatening Roar or three Waboku, and the reason for that is these have different names. So, you, there are occasionally instances that will come up where you want to be activating both of these to build up your chain link to get your chain strike further online. And if you're playing things with the same name in that chain, you can't activate chain strike or accumulate fortune, etc. So I do think it's fine just to play these three. For the side deck, we can't side into a Stein ODK strategy because Stein is banned now. So I decided just to side into a Monarch strategy here. I think it makes sense. You know, your opponent's like going to be siding into Decree and stuff. So they're shutting off their own traps. So they can't really protect your Monarchs as much. And also we got Mobius here to clear the Decree if we want to use our traps. Because frankly, you know, 15 cards is not enough to side out all these traps. Because we got 25 traps in the deck. So there will be some left over to be hit by Decree. Same with Burn cards and Death Wombat. And uh, the Monarchs can get aggressive over Death Wombat and clear that pretty easily. 
So, you know, we got triple side red, triple Mobius, triple Zvorg. We got a Reaper to wall up a bit. We got a book to protect our Monarchs or just flip things down. And we've got triple brain control to take our opponent's stuff because we figure our opponent's probably going to get more aggressive. So they likely will have monsters face up to take. And we got a premature barrel to bring back our Monarchs. A few decades just here. I mean, we're not going into this. We don't have any way to access it, but it's good to have to bluff our opponent. And uh, that's going to do it for the deck breakdown. Let's dive into some games and see how this deck actually plays. Okay, we got a game against Hoy here, a frequent guest on the channel. Always a pleasure to have him on. We're diving in to the games here. Uh, if you want to see more gameplay videos like this one, definitely subscribe to the channel. We're trying to reach 1,600 subscribers by the end of the month, and we are almost there. So definitely do that if you want to grow the community more. And, uh, you know, maybe show up in these games yourself, especially if you join the Discord server. But anyways, we got a pretty good opener. You know, we've got Big Shield Gardener. We've got some Chainable Traps, so we can potentially set up an Accumulated Fortune play here. So we're just going to set the big shield, set four, pass back to our opponent. If they do activate Heavy Storm, we can chain Ojama Trio and a Waboku and an Accumulate Fortune and a draw into two more cards. So uh, we feel fine about that. They're just going to set two, pass back to us. We draw Mecha Dog Marin. We'll just commit that to board as well, pass back to them. And uh, they are going to set one, set another, pass back to us. So it's a bit unfortunate that our Dimension Wall is kind of offline. Um, but I think it's ultimately okay, especially when we draw into this Morphing Jar. Morphing Jar is pretty nice there. We can set that, draw five next turn, uh, and we get no cards in hand right now, so we're feeling pretty good about this overall. Uh, in their standby phase, I'm just going to go for an Ojama Trio here. Yes, this does shut off our, you know, chain that we want to do, like, Accumulated Fortune, but I think this is fine because it does lock up their zones. I don't necessarily want them to, you know, commit more monsters to the field here to prevent Ojama Trio from activating in the first place. So I feel like it's fine just going for the Ojama Trio now. Um... Our opponent's thinking about that, but they will let that go through. They get three tokens here. And uh, unfortunately, on that, they're going to activate a Torrential Tribute here. And now we don't actually have the tools to build up this chain into a Chain Link 4 off the Accumulated. So that's kind of rough. Uh, we will also lose all of our powerful monsters here. We will be able to deal a 1,000 with the Mechanog Baron. Um, but ultimately, I think this is fine. It, it's just really awkward for us. Um, but, you know... I mean, at least this does open up the path for Dimension Wall, so that's kind of nice. Maybe I shouldn't have gone for the Ojama Trio. I wanted to use it while I had access to it, and I figured that blocking up their zones was, like, ultimately better than not doing that. But it did play into the TT, so, you know, maybe that was a mistake on my part. But it can be a bit tricky uh, sometimes. But anyways, uh, they're going to go for a Thunder Dragon here, pitching a TD, grabbing two more TDs from deck to hand. Kind of interesting because Chaos is banned in this format. No Chaos Orc, no CD, no BLS. So uh, Thunder Dragon isn't really played too often. But if you get Graceful Charity, I mean, that that is pretty good for the Thunder Dragons there. Pitching those two Thunder Dragons after drawing three, going for a Heavy Storm now. And again, you know, we can't build up our chain because we can't activate Dimension Wall. We can't activate Torrent's Fire. And uh, yeah, it's looking pretty bad for us. So just like that, the, the game turns really ugly uh, in a second for us. They're going to go for Avarice as well to draw two more cards here. And, uh, yeah, it's just not looking good for us. Ugh, this is, this is really, really rough. Uh, you never want to be in top deck mode with the Chain Strike deck because you need to build chains. That's what the deck wants to do. And so if you're out of cards, then you're in a really, really bad spot. So uh, we're not dead, but uh, Snipe Hunter might as well make us dead because unless we can clear that, um, you know, it's eating apart our board. Whatever we draw, it's going to be taken uh, so we draw Chain Strike. We're just going to set that. Try and bait out the Snipe Hunter because Chain Strike isn't really good to us on such low resources. But they've got the MST for that as well. And uh, this is just not looking good for us. They attack in for 2,900. And there's really not much we can do in this position. And this is one of the flaws of, of uh, Chain Burn, in my opinion. And that if you do wind up in a low resource situation, even if you've gotten some burn damage in, you're in a really, really tough spot a lot of the time. And uh, there are decks in the front that can put you into low resource situations, not just through like Heavy Storm or something, but even through like most Monarch decks as well. So um, you can wind up in some awkward spots. We're going to set the Gravity Bind. I don't have faith that this is going to survive because they've got four activations of Snipe Hunter if they want to go for that. Um, but, you know, it is what it is and they will snipe it there and then summon out a reaper as well to add insult to injury uh and they're gonna get in for 3200 so it's not quite insult to injury i think this does um or no i mean the reaper attack wouldn't have mattered i guess so yeah it doesn't really matter there either way we draw mecha dog marin isn't gonna help us any we're just gonna set that maybe bluff them into something if they can't snipe it with the snipe hunter uh but i think they do hit it yeah they do indeed hit it and uh, we're just gonna admit defeat so we do side in to the smoke screen of the monarchs for game two 
So I decided out things like the chain strikes, the accumulated fortunes, uh, some of the tremendous fires. I think I set out like just desserts as well. I think I should have decided out gravity bind because that does conflict with our game plan a bit, but we do have Mobius here to pop it if we want to. And I figure that they're probably going to be playing things like Decree, so it shouldn't really make too much of a difference in the end anyway. So we're just going to set the Marin, set the Secret Barrel there, pass back to them. They're going to go for a Thunder Dragon, pitch in one, and grab in two more from deck to hand. And uh, then they're going to set one, pass back to us. We try into a Morphing Jar, which is pretty good. We're just going to summon out this Marin, flip up another Marin, get in for 2k, or at least attempt to. They do have a call here, so they are able to bring back a Thunder Dragon, which is a bit unfortunate for us. It's not the end of the world here. Uh, we're just going to set a Dimension Wall instead of Gravity Bind now. The reason I do this is because I figure, like, if they've got Heavy Storm, they clear their own Thunder Dragon, and so it's a bit awkward for them. But if they don't have Heavy Storm then we can at least block the Thunder Dragon attack for sure with the Gravity Bind. So we're guaranteed to have one Marin left, right? And then we contribute over that Marin for Mobius, uh, potentially pop our own Gravity Bind if we had to flip that up, pop the Call or whatever else they might have, and get a big body on board, right? And if they do have Heavy Storm, you know, they can only, well, I guess they could side route something and then summon out something else, which would be awkward for us. But we do have the Morphing Jar here, so we recover the cards that we lose from this. So I think it's ultimately fine to do this. I can also Chain Secret Barrel to a Heavy Storm, which isn't terrible. Um... But yeah, they're going to go for a Graceful Charity here, draw three, pitch two, and uh, they're going to pitch a Neos and a Thunder Dragon. That's a bit scary because it means that they might be on O Oversoul to bring back the Neos. So we think about whether we want to go for a Secret Barrel here because, you know, they've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine cards here. So, you know, this isn't the worst Secret Barrel. And uh, if they do have like a Death Wombat, they just summon out here, then we're in a really tough spot. So... I, I do debate it. I think ultimately I just let it go through because, you know, we can sort of use this as bait for spell and trap removal. It's a chainable, but unfortunately they do have the Wombat here, which they'll summon out. And uh, then they've got the Heavy Storm on top of that. So that is, that's just rough. I mean, that is so rough. They've got an emergency call as well to add another Neos from deck to hand. And they do need to have the Oversoul. So we are not able to protect both of our Marins here. So we're going to be taking uh, a lot of damage from this because we will be taking a thousand from the Marins as well. They will take this 2000 damage. So that's something. Um, or no, they won't because, uh, Wombat's on field. Never mind, they won't be taking that. I forgot about Wombat. Yeah, Wombat is a major problem for this deck. Another flaw that this deck has, like, after siding, it is really, really weak to a lot of things. Wombat and Decree being very, very prime targets. Uh, and so you really do need to have ways to deal with that. We're going to go for Brain Con on the Neos here. So then we can treat that off for Immobius, pop that back row, and then attack into that Wombat there. So we'll be able to deal 800, which isn't terrible, and pass back to them. Unfortunately, you know, if they've got another Oversoul, they get to clear the Mobius, which, you know, is kind of like what their deck is trying to do. So they are able to bring back that Neos with the Oversoul, attack into the Mobius, and drop us down by 100 here. They'll pass back to us. We draw a Jar of Greed. Not terrible. Uh, we can just set the Morphing Jar, set the Jar, pass back to them. So at least we'll be able to hopefully recoup our um, cards here. They attack into the Morphing Jar. So they lose four cards here, and we both draw five. So I feel pretty decent about this, um, especially now that another O Oversoul is gone. So all three are gone, so they won't be able to recur that Neos very easily uh, once we clear that Neos. They're going to set one, pass back to us. We go for Jar here, just in case they're on Decree. We might as well fire it now. And we draw into a Big Shield Gardener here. We go for a Graceful because we might be able to wrap up the game here, potentially. we got to think about exactly what we want to do here. I pitch a Brain Con and a Big Shield because those are duplicates of what we have here. Um, but I think, honestly, I could have kept a Brain Con in hand. Because, like, basically this turn, what I'm going to try and do. And I'm going to go Pre-Mat, bring back Mobius here. And then Brain Con their Neos. That's 4,900 damage. I could either set the Big Shield or summon out the Sangin and attack in that way. So if I summon out the Sangin and attack in that way, that's 5,900 points of damage there, um, which then drops them down to 1,300. And then a Brain Con is potential lethal uh, later on if I've got another one. But I am very low on life points, down to 3,000. And I'm activating two cards that lower my life points by 800 each uh, on this turn. So I will be very low. So I think that, like... You know, it's not the biggest loss to lose the Brain Con here. But we're going to go for a Pre-Mat. We're going to target the Mobius, bring that back, and that will be fine. And then we are going to go for Brain Con on the Neos here. Then we're going to summon out this Sangin, attack in for a ton of damage here. They're going to, um, unfortunately, stop the Mobius by going Raigeki Break, pitching E-Call, popping the Pre-Mat. And then they're going to attack in, or we're going to attack in with Neos, steal 2,500. So they're down to 3,700. Uh, we have Woboku and Book of Moon to protect ourselves here. So I feel okay, ultimately. 
Um, so I'm going to pass that Neos back, pass back to them. And they are going to just attack in to our Sangam because this would be lethal damage here. We're going to go for Book to flip down the Sangam so that way we can grab a Reaper from deck to hand. So that way, you know, we can wall up a bit. They're just going to set two, pass back to us. We draw a Wolboku here, another one. So that's pretty good. We set a Big Shield Gardener here, pass back to them. We search out Reaper, so they'll think it's Reaper. So I figured that they'll go into it knowing that. Uh, they go for Premat here, which is a bit rough for us. They'll go for the Wombat here, bring that back. And then they will go for a Raigeki break, target our set. Now what we do here is we chain the Woboku, because if they do have a decree to stop the Woboku, then the decree chained to the Woboku here will actually stop the Raigeki break as well. So we just activate this, but it looks like it does go through. If we're not taking any damage this turn, we do have this Reaper here to wall up a bit more. So we're not dead, you know, we're, we're in an okay spot. They dust Tornado and hit our Woboku, which is a bit unfortunate there. But we're still okay until they drop Snipe Hunter. Ooh, that is very rough. Um, so now they can use the Snipe Hunter, try and pop our set if they whiff, then that's pretty good for us, but they do not whiff. And uh, we will be in a really bad spot. You know, they're attacking in for 16. This will be lethal, so we have to go, um, you know, Jar and Poison, gain 12. Um, but it is not enough here. We draw into a cylinder just a little bit too late, and that'll just be the end of the game. So I do like the Monarch slides, like side deck plan. I think it's... Fine. Um, I think we had played this a bit differently. Maybe things would have turned out differently, but like, it is tough to say. Um, if we'd kept that second brain con instead of other things in hand, maybe it would have turned out better for us. But I think we played as well as we could have. And I think even if we uh, kept that second brain con, we wouldn't have been able to win here because they're at 2,900 life points right now. Uh, and part of that's by lowering their own life points by 800 with the pre mat. So, um, yeah, I don't think that this was in the cards for us to win here, but. That's how it goes sometimes in Yu-Gi-Oh! And a very, very cool deck from Hoi. Um, I, I probably will be testing this out later in this week because, I mean, this deck's so cool, just going for the Oversouls to bring back the Neos. I'm not sure if they're playing it like a Neospatian suite as well, but still very, very cool deck. And it does show that you can play a variety of decks in this format. Okay, for our next game, we got a game against the World of Dark Arm God, if you can get from the channel. And this one's to show that, like, you know, while Strike might struggle against a variety of decks, it can be a good way to, like, gatekeep more rogue or jank decks in the format. Or not a good thing. Like, it's not good that these decks are gatekept by this deck. But what I'm saying is that, like, you know, uh, there are some jank decks that cannot deal with this deck. And it can just prevent them from really being super competitive in the format. But they're going to go for a knock there on the Medical Dog Marin, summon out a Sangan, try and attack in for a thousand after we set a Cylinder, a Boku, a Trio, and we've got a Graceful and Poison in hand now. I sort of blazed for this first turn as I was explaining what this duel's meant to show. But the reason I didn't activate Graceful here is I felt like we had a pretty good hand already. I didn't really need it. And I, I felt like I might as well save it for, like, if I want to go for a Chain Strike play or something. The reason I didn't Cylinder this end game is I thought that there would be better targets later on. Um, and also, I feel like, you know, building up a chain with this is better later. So uh, I'm fine just taking that thousand. We draw into Big Shield Garden, which is very nice. We're going to set that pass back to them. And again, I don't need to activate Graceful here because I'm feeling pretty good. They go for Sasuke Samurai and immediately go into the coin toss, but like, you know, you gotta give me time to actually think here. Uh, I will go for a cylinder on the Sasuke Samurai number four, dealing them 1200 and preventing it from actually battling with our big shield because that would potentially destroy it. So they'll take 1600 from that, uh, from the Sangin attack, and they'll pass back to us. We draw into a Mecha Dog Marin, which is pretty interesting. We go for Graceful here, draw three, pitch two. Uh, they can't activate Dushu in the middle of a, you know, Graceful Charity Resolution. Um, so that is also something important to note. Uh, we now know their back row, but I'm going to act like I don't because uh, I generally try and do that in these practice games. So I pitch a Poison and a Jar there because both the cards that we have in hand deal more damage than Poison. And we, I feel like we don't really need to draw that much more uh, with the Jar. So I'm just going to summon out this Marin, attack into the Sasuke Samurai number four. I figure if it destroys it with its effect, they take a thousand. If it doesn't, I take a 1200, but I'm fine taking that. Um, but they will uh, call Tails and they do call it incorrectly there. So we do take 1200 from that. So kind of unfortunate. We go for a Tremendous Fire here, dealing a thousand damage to them. And uh, then we set this Just Search Pass back to them. So we feel really good about this. We've got Trio to clog up their zones. So that way they've got five monsters on the field. And then we can go for Just Desserts here to deal them 2,500 damage on top of that. So they'll be down to 700, which is a very, very scary spot for them to be in. So um, they they go immediately to main, not giving me time. Uh, and I, I actually say in standby phase in the chat, but I guess they didn't see it at that point. But we go for Trio and Just Desserts here in the standby phase. 
dealing them 2,500. And uh, they will attack in with the Sasuke Sermon number four. It's a risky play, but I get why they do it. You kind of have to do it because they're down so low that they just need to get attacking in, hoping that the effect will go off and pop the Gardena. Uh, we choose not to Woboku this. I don't really feel like I need to Woboku here because I'm doing fine on life points. Uh, they do indeed call incorrectly, and that will be the end of the game. But there are many draws off the top that did it for us there. So we side in to the Monarch strategy. I think this time I do side out of the Gravity Bind. I leave in just desserts. I leave in a variety of things that are good against Patek. I think I take out the trios, though. I, I forget exactly. I should have uh, taken more careful notes on my siding there. But anyways, our opponent's going to open with a Grateful pitching a pot and a brain con. They're going to set two pounds back to us. And we draw brain control, which is not bad. We're just going to set a garden, set a jar, and set a book. Pass back to them. They are going to go for an MST on our back row. They luckily hit the one that we can chain here, the jar. So we'll draw off that jar. And they're going to flip up an assailant and flip up or summon out a Sasuke. So we're going to think about this, and we are indeed going to Book of Moon the Sasuke, so that way they take the damage from the Assailant here, um, and also does protect our big shield for a turn. So they will go for Confi now, which is a bit awkward for us here. They're going to take the Morphing Jar. I I think that's fine. It's just like Brain Con does clear the Sasuke, whereas uh, Morphing Jar, if you attack over the Sasuke, you know, you can pop it, but it does make sense because if we do have a way to stop the Sasuke from popping the Morphing Jar, or it does go off, then we get a lot of value there. So um, we feel pretty good about this, though. We're going to bring con that DD Assailant there, take control of that, attack into the set, just to clear the Sasuke, because Sasuke is a bit of a problem for us. And then main two, we're going to tribute over that Assailant for the Sidra, uh, set the Jar, pass back to our opponent. They're going to bring out a Breaker here, try and pop our back row. We've got the Jar, so we draw a card there. They go for Premat here uh, to get back a Sasuke Samurai number four, which is a bit annoying for us because this card... It just, you know, very frustrating to deal with, you know, it's it's a 50-50 chance of uh, killing our monsters whenever we attack into it or it attacks into us, and that can be very annoying if it does go off, so it does clear the Cyber Dragon there, and uh, we draw Dimension Wall, so we've got a couple good options here, we can set those pass back to them, and they bring out a DD Warrior Lady, they attack in with the uh, Sasuke Samurai into the Big Shield Gardena, and I do think here, I decide ultimately not to ring the Sasuke, because that was my original plan. But now that the DD Warrior Lady's out, it gets a bit more awkward because DD Warrior Lady can banish the Mechadog Baron, which I don't necessarily want because I want that to be dealing a thousand damage to my opponent here. So I do just let this go through and hope that it does call incorrectly. But unfortunately, you know, the coin toss does go through, so it will pop the big shield. They'll take a thousand from the Mechadog Baron, and they attacked with the Breaker, so maybe I didn't have to worry about the um, ring on the Warrior Lady. But we will just a Dimension Wall here. Uh, so that way they take 15 from that. We draw into a Cyber Dragon here. And uh, we do actually have a potential line to lethal if we attack in the Cyber Dragon into the Sasuke Samurai number four. And that does go through. Then they take 900. And then we can ring our own Cyber Dragon to deal the remaining 2100. But, you know, there's a chance that that does not work uh, because 50-50 coin toss. So I ultimately decide just to go for attacking into the Breaker here, dealing them 500, and then passing back to them. They've got Exile to pop our Sidra here. We could potentially chain Ring to pop our Sidra and drop them down to 200 life points, but that does drop us down to 4,100, and then we're taking 2,700 on top of that, so it's a bit risky, so I choose not to do that. They attack in with 1,500 off that Warrior Lady, and I think about this because I want to ring one of them for sure, and I ultimately decide to ring the Warrior Lady because it's more damage, so they will drop down to 800 here. And we drop down to 3,500. We draw into a brain control, so that will just be the end of the game here. Pretty good top deck from us. We could have drawn into a monarch, and that would be really bad for us. But I think, uh, you know, we were rewarded by our deck, so that's kind of nice. Uh, but monarchs can brick, and that is a flaw of this deck, you know, post-siding, that uh, you can potentially be siding into some bricky stuff. But luckily here, the brain con will be enough, and they just had an Icarus attack there, probably to pair with Hunter Owl. So uh, I think that this uh, deck we were facing, it was like a Hunter Owl win deck. Uh, and that's where a deck can struggle against something like Chainburn. Uh, not necessarily because Chainburn is a tier one meta threat, but because tier, um, you know, the rogue decks, the decks that are not tiered, um, really, are decks that often do have like one game plan that they want to pull off. And if the deck that does something very different from that game plan, they can really struggle uh, compared to the more versatile decks that are like at the top of the format. So um, I do think that. This deck probably is a bit underpowered, and Chainburn is a deck that can stop the more underpowered deck. So that's why Chainburn probably is tier two or so, in my opinion. Uh, either tier two or top of Rogue. But um, I, I don't necessarily think that Chainburn is really the best deck in the world. 
because again, you know, you saw in game one how it can really struggle uh, against certain decks. And uh, that wasn't even like a meta deck. That was like a Neos control deck. Uh, which is you know very different from something like Monarchs or Machine OTK or something like that. So I do think that this deck is not quite there in this format. But of course, you know, this is the last game I got with it. Whenever I show off a Chain Burn deck, I got to show off the Chain Burn Mirror. So let's dive into that one now. Okay, we got a game against History of YGO1. If you're guest on the channel, I'll just put it at them all. We're diving into the Rock, Paper, Scissors. And uh, this is going to be the Chain Burn Mirror match. So unfortunately, our particular build of Chain Burn is a bit disadvantaged in the mirror match because we've got 43 cards and a 40 card chain burn deck is going to potentially draw better than a uh, 43 card chain burn deck so um i i mean i think in general we're fine but like against chain burn specifically because both these decks sort of just like wait around to assemble lethal um i think that you know we we are at a potential disadvantage but we go for just search here we're just gonna build the chain now uh before they can potentially activate things to mess up our chain um so we're gonna go just search jar of greed ojama trio Chain Strike and Chain Strike. So this will resolve backwards. So there'll be 2,000 damage from the first Chain Strike, uh, 1,600 from the second one. And uh, they get three tokens here off the Ojama Trio and then 2,000 damage from the Just Desert. So I feel like this was pretty good. I could have waited for them to activate something, but they might not have done that. So I feel ultimately okay with this. And uh, then we, I think we just set three pass back to them. We're in a pretty good spot here. And they will summon out a Desk Koala. They're going to attack in for 11. I mean, we're just going to Magic Cylinder that. So they drop down to 1,300. Now we've got 800 from Poison the Old Man. So uh, there are a lot of things that just win us the game here. We're just going to set a Big Shield Gardener. Pass back to them. They are going to set one, set another. Pass back to us. We draw a Mecha Dog Marin. We're just going to summon that out and try and crash it into the Desk Koala here. Just to deal them 1,000. That will be the end of the game here if it connects. But they've got a Magic Cylinder of their own. So we'll take 1,000 from that. And uh, we're going to pass back to them. They switch the quality of defense. Set one, pass back to us. We draw a sang in here. We set that. It is loading up our field in case they've got Just Search, which is a bit awkward for us. Um, but I figure, you know, the deck thinning off this thing is pretty nice. So we want it on field. They're going to flip up a Big Shield Gardener, which is a bit scary. I'm not sure why they are doing that, but it makes me a bit concerned. They go for a Secret Barrel here. Uh, they go for a Chain Detonation which is a bit of an interesting card. I've seen some Chain Burn decks playing this. I'm not the biggest fan of it because I feel like it doesn't do enough in a regular Chain Burn deck, but in the mirror, it's actually very good um, because, you know, it's the mirror match, so it's a different sort of game. And also, you know, if you've got multiple of these, you can actually use them in the same chain to block your opponent's Chain Strikes. So um, they're going to go for Mystical Wind Typhoon, Chain Link 3. So that's also a card that occasionally sees play in some of these Chain Burn decks. I'm not the biggest fan of it because it's very situational, but... Uh, it is something that you can potentially play if you want more copies of like MST in the deck for like decree and stuff. Um, but I'm not sure how it is like in the main deck. I think after siding would be generally better there. Um, but anyways, they go for, um, they go for accumulate fortune here. And, uh, you know, I'm, I asked about their target for wind typhoon and, you know, apparently there is no target here, which is kind of interesting. So, uh, I think that I I'm not sure if that's like lack of problem solving card text or if it's just, um, you know, how it works. But either way, you know, we're going to play it as if it doesn't target. And because of that, um, it, because like, you know, I chain link four, I'm going to poison of the old man here, just so that way they don't pop this because I want to get this burn damage in here. Uh, no matter what they go for an accumulated fortune here on chain link five. And uh, I choose not to act with Boku because if they get like a chain strike to finish this off as the last card, I don't want to put another thing in the chain. I don't think that they can get through to attack into us directly here. So I don't really feel the need to add that. So they're going to take eight. We take uh, 500 from the Chain Detonation, and then we also take only 4 here from the Secret Barrel, so that's 800 damage from that. So, uh, that'll be that Chain. They go for a Graceful as well. Uh, they do shuffle back the Chain Detonation since it was Chain Link 2, I believe. Uh, they're going to go for Graceful, pitching a Big Shield and a Ring. They're going to set one, set another, set another, set another, and pass back to us. So that's full 5. We draw into a Marin there. Uh, we're just going to flip the thing in, flip... Uh, the Marin to attack and just try and attack into the big shield. And uh, that's going to be the end of the game. I'm, I'm really not sure why they flipped up the big shield Gardena. Uh, they had a TT here. Maybe they were planning on TTing, but like, yeah, I, I don't know why they didn't just TT. Because if they activate TT as chain link one, then like they still get secret barrel to go off with full effect. I, I guess they lose to Marin in that case. So uh, I guess they realized that. Um, but yeah, unfortunately it does not work out for them there. So we'll be going on to game two here. Now, 
most of the time in the chain burn mirror, I would like side into more of my side deck here, siding into a monarch thing, because I do think monarch is generally better than chain burn. But uh, because I wanted to show off the chain burn mirror, I just kept it on chain burn here. So I didn't really side anything uh, in game two. I kept in like the Wobokus and T-Roars and things like that because I felt like they were good just for chain building. So um, I felt like this was ultimately fine. They're going to set three pass back to us. We draw a ring here. We're going to set a T-Roar, a Poison, a Jar, and no Jama Trio pass back to them. They go for Seeker Barrel here. So uh, then they go for a Jama Trio. And uh, then that'll be it. So, okay. So we'll take a fair amount of damage here. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So that will be 1,800 points of damage here. And we're taking from that. And uh, we'll pass back to them. They're going to set two. Pass back to us. We draw a Jar of Greed. So we're not really drawing into our burn stuff as much. We draw with the Jar because I want to draw into the burn stuff. We set this Jar. Pass back to them. They will set another. Pass back to us. We draw into another Tremendous Fire. So I figure I'll activate the first one. Maybe bait them into starting to build a chain. But they do not do anything there. We go for a Jar here. Draw one. Draw into another Woboku. So we're bricking on the T-Roars and Wobokus here, unfortunately. We set a Ring because if they do have, like, Justice Urch or something, we can chain Ring to it, pop a trio uh, if we want to. And uh, we do draw Justice Urch of our own, which is pretty good since we've got this trio here. So I think that is something that I want to set up. I set that. Pass back to them. They will set one. Pass back to us. We go for T-Roar here. In the end phase, because I just want to get that out of my back row. Um, we draw a Morphing Jar, which is interesting, because we could go for Morphing Jar here to draw five, uh, which is not bad, in my opinion. So I set the Morphing Jar, set the Woboku, they go for MST on the Woboku, and then Chain Jar, Chain Reckless, Chain Just Desserts, and Chain Chain Detonation. Okay, so they're just getting that back to hand, and then dealing uh, 2,000 damage to us. Now, I don't go for the ring here. Uh, I could have. But I feel like it's ultimately fine to save the ring for when I'm building my own chains here. Certainly because I don't think I'm at risk of death here at this point. Uh, and I'd rather save the ring for protecting my Morphing Jar here if they try and attack into it. Um, there aren't, like, the most monsters that I'd want to, you know, ring to do that with. But they do bring out Sidra, and that is one of them that I definitely want to ring. So I go for ring, chain link 1, Jester's chain link 2, and then an Ojama Trio, chain link 3. And then Poison the Old Man, chain link 4, to gain 1,200, just to prevent myself from dying here. So, uh, they will be taking a fair amount of this, because what will happen is Poison the Old Man will gain me 12. Uh, Ojama Trio will give them three tokens, so that means that this will be 2,000 damage off Justice Earth, and then 2,100 damage off Ring Destruction. Because Ring Destruction just rid the Sidra after the Justice Earth resolves. So, um, they, uh, I, I don't know exactly, you know, what goes on here, but there's, there, I guess there's some confusion, uh, on, on it, exactly how this will happen. But, uh, either way here, um, they take 20, um, 4,100 damage total. So, um, yeah, there, there was, like, we, we ultimately, like, got it to work out, uh, correctly, but, uh, it was just very, very strange sort of, uh, you know, um, maneuvering as it went on, but anyways, we draw, and they've got this chain, uh, detonation here, they've got Just Desserts here as well, and Just Desserts will be the end of the game, so yeah, unfortunately, we were, um, not able to pull it off there. I could have potentially not popped the Sidra, I could have popped, like, a token instead, um, just to get it off field, but I mean, I think I had to do it because I, you know, if they tag into Morphing Jar after setting their whole hand, then they get a lot of things to work with there. So, uh, yeah, uh, it, it's a bit awkward, but that's how the Chain Burn Mirror goes. So, uh, for the uh, next game, I side out of the Wubokus and the T Roars. I bring in the Sidras. Um, because the Wubokus and T Roars were not really useful for us there. Anyways, we draw, and we're going first this time, and uh, we get a pretty good opener here, all things considered. We will just set the Marin, uh, set Jar, set Dimension Wall, set a Secret Barrel, set a Poison, pass back to them, and uh, see what they do. They're going to go for Graceful here, and that's fine by us. They draw three, pitch two. They pitch a Sidra and a Woboku. They're going to set three, set four, set five, or uh, set a different five, uh, and pass back to us. We are going to flip up this Marin. We're going to attack in for a thousand, or at least attempt to. They might have a cylinder or a dimension wall. They've got a ring instead. So um, chain link two, they're going to go for Ojama Trio. Uh, that is fine. And chain link three, they're going to go for Jester. So this is actually a misordering on their part. So they go, you know, if they do this, then Jester only deals 500, and then the Ojama Trios uh, get on field. So they go for chain link four, chain detonation here, and then chain link five, they've got chain strike here. And then chain link six, we're actually going to chain secret barrel because they're dropping down a lot of cards here. So we want to get this, uh, you know, off right now. And uh, then uh, I think we're just going to leave it at that. Yeah, we do leave it at that. So 
Uh, now, at this point, we just in the moment, we have a dispute about like, you know, they, they basically ask if they can take back the, the chaining here. And ultimately, I, I do allow them to do it because like, you know, I they say like, well, if, if you're not going to do it, I'm just going to mid defeat. So I just allow them to do it. But like, you know, if you're playing a deck like Chainburn, okay, don't do this. Okay. If you're playing a deck like Chainburn, know how to play the deck. Okay. Really, really practice with the deck and stuff and don't wind up in situations like this because, you know, Chainburn already is a deck that like, is not often that fun for your opponent to play. So if you add on top of that, you know, asking for take backs and things like that, that that's not really the best look. And in general, I don't like, like, I would not go and allow this take back until they basically said, you know, I'm just going to resign. And uh, so because I wanted to get a full actual duel here, I, I allowed it. But um, this was um, kind of kind of unfortunate here. But anyways, uh, they will take a thousand. Did they take? I, I think they should have. Uh, let's see. I'm not sure if they took the full thousand because we both take thousand from. OK, I think we both forgot to take. No, wait, I, I took a thousand from that. So. Um, yeah, they forgot to take another thousand, I think, here. I don't know. There, there's some weird mathing there, but, um, someone can check back at the video, but basically there, there's a lot of confusion over that chain. And, uh, so it, it didn't quite work out for us there. Unfortunately, these trios, uh, block up our cyber dragon a little bit. Uh, and this gravity bind is also blocking us a little. I felt like gravity bind was okay to keep in the deck as opposed to like Loboku and, um, Keyword, but maybe I should have taken that out as well. We draw a chain strike here, so we could potentially set up a big chain next turn. So I'm going to wait for them to do something with their uh, cards here before I go for the chain strike of my own. And I go for a jar here. They go for a jar of their own, so we're shut off of using the chain strike there. Uh, and then chain link three, they go for MST on our poison. We chain the poison to gain life points here because we are a bit low. And then they go for a chain detonation as chain link four. This is what I mentioned by like this card being good in the mirror. Um, because in the mirror match, like you're both kind of waiting and like going low resources, then going high resources, etc. And, um, also if you have two chain detonations here like this, then it really does stymie chain strikes a lot because, uh, it does duplicate. So they go for a secret battle here at chain link six. And because we gain the 1200, you know, backwards, the chain resolve backwards, uh, we will lose, um, before we gain from the poison. So, uh, quite unfortunate that it worked out that way for us. I think if, you know, we had kept the chain link as it actually happened before, you know, we might've had a chance to win this one. But um, again, learn how to play the decks if you're playing something like this. You know, uh, you can play chain burn all you want. You can play any number of generic decks, but like if you're playing this deck, know how to play it, right? But anyways, that's gonna do it for this video. I don't think the chain burn is a deck that you'll have to worry about like too, too much in chimeric format. If you're thinking about playing this format and you're like, oh no, chain burn to there. Like I can't play it. I don't think this deck is that good. People will be playing it because people will play degenerate stuff if it's available. But I think that overall, this deck is just way too fragile, uh, way too weak to side deck hate. And uh, it's just not quite there in this format. Maybe with a more optimized list, it will get better. You know, if it does get better with a more optimized list, then, um, you know, I'd be happy to tier it at a higher level. But I think right now this deck is not really worth you know, considering competitively. Um, but it is good still to have side deck slots for it, you know, like decrees or wombats or something like that. But what do you think about this deck? Do you think that I'm sort of under playing it? Do you think that it's like actually a lot better than I'm making it out to be? Or do you think that it's actually even worse? That it's maybe rogue or even trash here? Let me know down in the comments below. Also, you know, as always, big shout outs to my patrons, GMYFS, Rincewin, Porkchop Coon, Bren Donker, Tyler Compton, and Dump Truck. It means a lot that you all support me this way and encourage me to make more videos like this on the channel. If you want to join the Patreon, links in the description down below. If you want to join the Discord server where you can get games in these formats, definitely join the Discord server linked in the description below as well. And, you know, do all the YouTube stuff, like, comment, subscribe, etc. It helps to grow the channel, helps to grow the community even more. But that's going to do it for this video. I hope that you enjoyed it as always. And until next time, I've been Ben from YGF from Zero, and I'm signing off.